This program is brought to you commercial free through the generous support of the Kamehameha Schools. No ke kumu ulu, the ulu tree, retold by Kavehi Avelino, illustrated by Eve Furchgat. This is a mo'olelo about ku, a major akua in traditional Hawaiian society. It is said that ku came from the faraway land of Kahiki before settling here in Hawaii. As an akua, he takes the form of things in nature, such as the ohi'a, ki, and noni plants. These kinolo are his bodily forms. Here in Hawaii, Ku assumed the life of a regular man. He lived and worked as an ordinary kanaka, not a revered akua. Eventually, he settled down with a wahine and spent his nights and days with her. Because her eyes were covered and blinded with love, she was unaware that her kane was actually an akua. Ku and his wahine lived together for a very long time and had several keiki. Ku worked hard as normal kanaka do, providing for his ohana. As a mahi'ai, he farmed kalo until the day turned into night, just like a regular kanaka. Theirs was a lifestyle of peace, dignity, and plenty. But then, things began to change. Famine came upon them. Aoheua, the water from the clouds, disappeared and the land became arid. Aohevaikahe, the water that cut across the earth stopped flowing and the streams became empty. Aohepua'i, the water from underground stopped gurgling and the springs became dry. All the plants withered. Aohemea'i, there was nothing left to eat. Ku thought to himself, if there is no vai and no mea'ai, there can be no life a oleola. As he mulled over the fate of his ohana, a mana'o occurred to him. He rushed off to speak with his wahine. My dear, cherished flower, he called to her, people are truly suffering without vai and mea'ai. We are seeing the hardship of famine, but there is a way to find mea'ai to feed our ohana, and only I can retrieve it. It is a long journey that cannot be measured. It is a journey of no return. Ku's wahine immediately dismissed the mana'o. You leave so that we may live, but we will surely die without you. Mai hele oi, don't go, she insisted. Then a sound struck her ears. The sound carried the voices of her beloved keiki crying in starvation. Because her keiki were pololi and weak, the wahine was forced to reconsider. No longer could she refuse Ku's plan. She agreed to let him go. They went to the clearing in front of their hale. There, Ku gave his final aloha to his beloved wahine. He explained, I will stand upside down on my po'o and descend into the ground. Mai maka'u, do not be afraid. Where I disappear, mea'ai will grow for our ohana. Ku did exactly as he said. He stood upside down on his po'o and descended into the honua. Once his po'o and shoulders disappeared, it wasn't long before his entire body disappeared into the honua. Ku's wahine was consumed with kaumaha as she grieved for her kane. Every day she went to the spot where Ku disappeared into the honua. Overcome with loneliness, the way maka from her eyes trickled down watering the dirt below. <laughs> Ten days passed, and the wahine returned to the area where she would cry. To her surprise, there, in the exact spot where Ku had disappeared, a small la'au was growing. She realized 
that Arkani's words had come true. Kupanaha, this is amazing! She exclaimed. We are saved! It wasn't long before the Lao grew into a large, handsome kumu. Its wood was sturdy, its leaves were attractive, and its fruit was nice and round with a patterned exterior. It was an ulu tree, the first of its kind in Hawaii, and on it grew the mea'ai that is looked up to, ka'ai na na iluna, the mea'ai that is often reached with a stick, ka'ai ki o e la'au. The ulu fruit was broiled and fed to the keiki. The ohana ate until they were full. Their hunger pains were gone, and their stomachs were no longer pololi. Ku's ohana was spared from starvation. The fruit of this kumu was for Ku's ohana, and Ku's ohana alone. If someone else tried to pick an ulu using a low pole or by climbing up the kumu, the whole kumu ulu would shrink back into the honua. As time passed, little ka sprouted from the roots of the first kumu ulu. These new kumu ulu were given to neighbors to plant in their own areas to provide mea'ai for more ohana. Ku's generosity and his amazing plant, the ulu, helped his ohana and his people escape the famine. The fruits of Ku's sacrifice continue to grow throughout Hawaii, nourishing people to this day.